Some of the sweetest antique illustrations related to sewing are those of little girls sitting beside a woman, maybe a mother or a grandmother, who is teaching her to sew. I always think that the artists have accurately captured that look of determination or accomplishment that we know so well in the process of sewing. I truly hope each of you is teaching someone to sew. If you aren't today, what about tomorrow? Kids love to sew. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to my sewing room. I wonder how many of you love projects which are easy and fun to do. I think if I were asked you to raise your hands, probably everyone watching would raise his or her hand. This is an easy and fun to do quilt wall hanging. This is called raw edge applique. As you can see, it's a wonderful, wonderful fabric, beautiful bright colors that says Mary and then a wonderful uh, Christmas tree with stars and all kinds of decorative uh, trims. Plus of course, a few presents under the Christmas tree. This is fun and easy to do. I am so happy to have as my guest today, my friend Patrick Lose. Patrick is the owner of Patrick Lose Studios, and he also is representing the Warm Company today. Patrick, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to and be I here. I love your quilt, and I Thank can't you. wait for you to tell our viewers how easy it really is. Oh, it's <laughs> it's really easier. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this project actually only took me uh, probably from including the time that it took for me to design it, about six hours. Wow, I so, love it, I love it. Thank you, thanks. It's, Christmas is my favorite time of year anyway, but I also design projects, you know, especially for Christmas because I love it so much. And this one, you know, during the Christmas season, you don't have a lot of time to do no, things. No, that's so, right. <laughs> so this is a good one. It's, it's very easy, actually. Um, again, raw edge applique. Um, using a fusible webbing, uh, this particular brand has two sheets of paper with the fusible web in between. You just place that over your paper pattern and all of the patterns that I design are reversed when they're printed, you know, for, for fusing. So you just trace that, uh, you know, in this case, yellow uh, elements within the design. I'm going to be tracing, you know, those elements. Then you just peel one of the paper backings off and that exposes the fusible web. So you just press that onto your fabric, and I've done that here already. Uh, you press it onto the wrong side, and then when you cut these pieces out, they're going to be reversed the right way. So this particular one is already fused, and you just peel that paper backing off. Then I've already assembled the quilt back, and the last piece is ready to go into place. And all you have to do is put that into place and with a good warm iron and steam, press it into place. Now, believe it or not, that is quite a few pieces to cut and, and fuse down, but you're basically done except for the quilting. So now the only thing that's left to do is to uh, sandwich the batting and the backing fabric and to quilt over all the elements with uh, meandering stitch or, you know, stippling or something like that. And put your binding on. And put on. the binding on, and it's done. Well, that is so much fun. And really, you said this would take about how long? Well, from, I think from cutting actually it out, cutting it out and, and making everything, and probably stippling. five hours or so. Five hours. That is a wonderful yeah, project. Yeah, you could do it in a sitting. You know, Patrick, I was wondering, um, how young a child do you think could do something like this? Oh, I, one of my granddaughters uh, could easily do this. She's eight years old, and she would cut those pieces out and have a blast. See, what yeah. a wonderful, you know, we talked about me memories of mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers, sure. exactly. I might add, <laughs> teaching children how to sew and how to right. quilt. And I just think this would be a wonderful oh, yeah. project. It's a perfect project. For I kids. think it is, too. Yeah. And you know what? Tell us a little bit about your fabrics, too, about how you design these beautiful, uh, these are all your fabric designs. Yeah, the, Tell us how you come up with that wonderful blue p pattern there. This was actually a, a painting that I did. Um, all the fabrics that I do, I paint on you know, watercolor or um, acrylic paints, sometimes even colored pencil, and they're just reproduced for printing onto fabric. So in this case, though, I, I did a painting 
scanned it into the computer and did a little Photoshop work also. Okay. So, you know, sometimes it's computer aided and sometimes not. Most of the time what I what I design is painted by hand. And it's sold all over the world now. So, And are all of these, like the green and the red and the pink and the yellow and the black, are they all the same pattern, just different this, colors? Right. You can, you can tell here uh, it, it is it, the same print. Uh, this particular one, I believe, is in 29 different colors. So you can, you know, pick enough colors to do an entire quilt out of the same fabric print if you'd like. But it's not necessary. What's your favorite part of designing fabrics? Um, actually getting to feel them in my own hands and, and work with them, after I think. After it's finished. Yeah, after it's finished. <laughs> the design process is fun, too, but I I really like working with it also. I'm a tactile Well, I person. really like your fabrics Thank and you. your Thank designs you. and the fact that they are very easy. And a grandfather yeah. or a grandmother That's right. could work with a grandchild exactly. and pass on this love. That's right, and it's a great time to spend with your Thank children. you, Patrick. And now Patrick has some sewing inspiration ideas for you. These fall pumpkins are so cute. Talk to us a little bit about this, Patrick. Well, this one, this particular quilt is called Pumpkin Party. It's a quilted <laughs> wall hanging. And it's kind of, uh, my inspiration was the antique uh, paper mache pumpkins. And it's kind of a take on those with the silly faces. And, and this one is... That's so it, satin stitch applique. Satin right. stitch so it's still applique. fusible applique. And I love the candy corn. That was my daddy's favorite candy. Oh, yeah. was, was candy. My daddy was born on Halloween, by the way. Oh, boy. Okay. So we always love candy corn and the pumpkins sure, that were sure. on Halloween. Oh, this is such a favorite. The, oh. This one's good for a, a child's room, you know, uh, help them with their alphabet. But this is raw edge applique. So very easy. Again, the, the piecing probably was the most time consuming part of that quilt. And even that was not very time consuming. When I look at this, I think what an unbelievable present it would make for a teacher for the end of the oh, year. Oh, sure, sure. An outstanding teacher that had been so good to your child. And That's this right. would take approximately how long to make, Patrick? Um, I would say uh, maybe 10 hours, 10, 10 to 12, hours. Oh, what, depending on the what applique. An adorable quote. A lot of cutting out, I guess. And this is so happy. I love the pastel yeah. train. Now, what kind of applique is that? This is also a fusible applique. Um, on these pieces, though, after the fusing was done, we cut out the center of the, the fusible. So it's only, the fusing is only along the border here. And the actual stitching is just a loose zigzag stitch to go over the raw edge. So it's not real time consuming. All right. Now let's take another okay. look under here. It's something so much. Are these your fabrics, by the way? No, you these are not. These, uh, so some wonderful. of them are, I guess. But, so pretty. And uh, tell like me about this applique. It. This, again, is uh, fusible also. Uh, the entire piece isn't fused, so it's a little bit softer since it's a baby uh, quilt. And then the stitching around the edge is just a loose uh, zigzag stitch. So much fun and yeah. so wonderful. Thank you so oh, much welcome. for being here Thank today. You. And now I have a So Quick, So Easy project to share. Now I am going to show you one of my all-time favorite gifts and one of my all-time favorite things to do with machine embroidery. These little pillows, they're purchase pillows. You buy them already finished, which makes it extremely easy. I'm just going to tell you about this one first, which is so pretty. This says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is a beautiful little that starts with train, train a child. And we have used an absolutely magnificent machine embroidery that really looks like drawn thread work. This is one of my favorite machine embroideries. And so you have a train absolutely beautiful wouldn't this be a beautiful newborn gift or a beautiful gift for a christening or a birthday any kind of a present for a baby and also the little um, beading around the edge the little bead it really isn't beading it's just a little uh, tracking and you have run the beautiful silk ribbon through that this one happens to be blue but of course it could be in any color now i oh let me turn it over and show you this little pillow comes with one of the um slip your hand in the back not the kind that will not I and mean, you can open it and wash it okay this is the purchase pillow the first thing you'll do will be mark the center then it already comes finished so what we're going to have to do is open up the pillow so it can be hooped and get ready to do the machine embroidery now that's easy enough and these little pillows are not expensive either all right after you do your machine embroidery then you go back pin all of this back up well, that, and so you can sew it back together again. 
I like to use bodkins when I thread ribbons through. This is kind of, a, this is a drawn thread work or it, even if it were a wide entredeau or a little bit of bridging, it is so nice to use a bodkin or something with a blunt end. And we love to use the silk ribbon which drapes so beautifully. So we're going to thread this up in a bodkin and we have run ours under two over two, under two over two, which makes it awfully pretty. And that little ribbon adds a real final touch to these little pillows, which are so easy to do. And let me bring this pillow back one more time so you can just look at it. I absolutely love these pillows for all baby occasions. And you wanna know something? You can also make these, um, maybe not train up a child, but put a verse of scripture and embroidery. And really this is a lovely present with these purchase pillows that makes it so easy. This is a lovely present for any occasion. And now I have a wonderful trick on a doll dress to share with you. Years ago, when I opened my retail business on Madison Street, I remember teaching the heirloom sewing classes, the French sewing dresses, the little French party dress, the heirloom party dress, and everyone saying to me, Martha, I'm terrified of plackets. I said, well, if you're gonna do heirloom sewing, you have to get over your terror of plackets. It is so easy, so I'm going to show you how easy it is. This adorable little doll dress, so cute on the front, of course, but let me just turn it around. We really do have to get the placket, so I'm going to turn it around, and her little pinafore does not have a placket, and I'm going to have to move her hair around, but her dress has a beautiful placket, and this is really true on nearly all heirloom sewing. You have to have a beautiful placket. Now, you just stand up there. There you go. Now, I have a little doll dress to show you a little bit closer. This placket happens to be a little bit longer on this dress. And you will see it's just absolutely beautiful. It has a, a little piece turned under and then it folds over beautifully. And you have to have these perfect plackets. The first thing you do is to draw the length that you want the placket to be. And then you cut it open. Now, that was pretty simple, wasn't it? Okay, I cut it open. And the only secret to making these wonderful plackets is to get a piece of fabric. Now, I did these in contrasting colors. You get a piece of fabric. Actually, you need it twice as wide as this ecru piece of fabric is because I have to put raw edge to raw edge and this edge has to be finished completely. So twice as wide, fold it over, press it. This happens to be bias. You do not have to use bias. Now, how do you place this placket so it'll be perfect? Well, I'll show you. You pin it, I move my arm out of the way, you pin it where it pins raw edge to raw edge on the ends. And can you see how it comes down naturally in a point where I have a little seam allowance in the middle? Well, the point of the placket, and this is called easy plackets, is I measure this distance in the center where it naturally falls, raw edge to raw edge and then the center. I, that is my seam allowance. I start sewing over on one edge using that seam allowance. I sew all the way down in the center. It just barely catches the fabric. You'd really just want just a little bit caught. And then I come right over with that same seam allowance. I've set up my sewing machine where I'm going to just lower the presser foot and it will be the seam allowance. My fabric will follow the edge of the presser foot. That makes it a lot easier than I just sew straight across traveling right along. Of course, I'm supposed to take out the pins. Every sewing machine in the world says do not sew over pins, so Martha, remove your pins. Remember, I'm using that same seam allowance. Now, I have to be really careful when I come in the middle because that is where I just barely catch just a little bit. And then I sew with that same seam allowance right over to, let me hold it right over to the very edge, that same seam allowance. So the same seam allowance went all the way across, all the way, just barely caught in the middle. Now let me come back and show you what it looks like when I finished it. Okay, remember I caught the seam allowance just in the middle, then it looks, I fold it in, I'm going to turn it over to the back. There's one final little step you're going to do. After you have your whole placket in, you're going to come back and just sew a little triangle there. Oh, I can remember my mother's teaching me this years ago. You sew just a little bitty triangle to hold it. And that way, when I turn the placket over, sewing that final little triangle, the little dart at the bottom, will mean that it will fold over just beautifully and you'll have a perfect 
plaque it every single time. And now we have some beautiful hand embroidery to share with you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, my very dear friend and business colleague, Wendy Shane. Wendy is the owner of Wendy Shane Designs and she is the designer behind Petite Poche Patterns. She is a frequent contributor to So Beautiful Magazine and has studied and taught literally all over the world. And my favorite place where she has studied needlework is the Royal School of Needlework in London. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Martha. I brought with me these two little uh, garment samples to share this stitch that I'm about to show you. If you focus on the bottom of hem of the christening gown, you'll see the little squiggly line. That shape is stitched with a stem stitch. So if, uh, if you're ready, we'll go ahead and start. Now I've re reproduced the same design on my embroidery hoop and I've turned it so that I'm working it horizontally because this stitch is worked from left to right. Now I'm going to emerge at the beginning of the line and then I'm going to hold on to the thread as I position the stitch. Now the first stitch is twice as long and halfway back. So I'm going to take a rather long, longish stitch and then I'm going to bring it back between those two positions. So if I started at A and I went in at B, then C would be in between those two. Now that's your very first stitch. Now the next stitch is going to be half as long and then it will emerge now through the hole of the existing, the previous stitch. Now what is happening is the thread is actually twisting as I stitch and the twist is causing a rope-like effect. This stitch is great for stitching flower stems, hence the name. Or you can use it for outlining a shape. It makes a great boundary too. Now the stitch progresses down the shape. Remember to keep your stitch length evenly spaced, your tension nice and firm, but not too firm. Um, I prefer stitches that are on the tight side. Um, I just think that it makes the threads that on the fabric look a little more refined and as long as the fabric is securely in the hoop you can get away with it. If your fabric is slack then you have a problem so make sure that you have a nice hoop that is uh, well tightened and your fabric is inserted correctly. Now um, you're going to go ahead and complete the stitch by stitching all the way to the end and then when you get to the end you can work along the back side of the stitch and then complete your Lazy Daisy leaves. Now we're going to do Lazy Daisy flowers in another segment, but let me go ahead and show you how a Lazy Daisy stitch is worked. You'll come out at the tip of the leaf and let's say that position is A. Hold the thread out of the way and then go back in the same exact place at A. So you're coming out at A and you're sewing in at A. Now you want to make sure to hold on to your thread loop because if you let go, it's going to go, it's going to come out, the stitch will come out. Now I'm going to position the stitch at the rounded part of the leaf through the loop. Come up and tighten and tack it down. Now I bet you noticed something funny about the way I'm stitching. What I'm doing is I'm actually stitching the stitches in two steps. I'm going in one and out on two. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm working in an embroidery hoop. And you never scoop when you work in a hoop. And normally when you're doing a stitch that where you're sewing in and out in one motion, you're working it over your finger. So let me show you what the completed stem will look like. Let me grab my hoop from over here. Now this is what it looks like. If you can look at this, you'll see that it has a nice rope-like appearance. So I'm going to turn the hoop around because I want to show you how to tie it off. On the back side, you have a very evenly spaced back stitch. This is correct. So the reverse of a stem stitch is a back stitch. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and bring the thread tail into the first stitch 
and then through the second stitch. Notice I'm going in two completely different directions. This is called weaving or trussing the stitch. This makes a very secure way of tying off without putting a knot. And then all I have to do is just cut the tail off and I'm done. So make sure you choose this stitch for your projects and I think you'll really like it. Wendy, that's just fascinating, and I love the way you have had you have them run vertically on this beautiful dress. Thank you so much for being here again and sharing your mastery of embroidery. It's always a pleasure for me to have that little lesson, too. Thank you so much, Martha. And now I'm going to share a piece from my vintage collection with you. This beautiful Christine dress, I could use a lot of adjectives uh, describing it. Fabulous, beautiful, creative, unusual. I love to think about the ladies who made these beautiful clothes. And I just, of course, I wish they could talk because I would love to know for whom this dress was made. It has so many ideas that would be beautiful for you to use today. First of all, we have a raglan sleeve. As you can see, the sleeve has two different types of laces and goes completely across. No set-in sleeve, it's just a raglan sleeve, which is absolutely beautiful. All of this sewn by hand. Now, come on down, let's look at the different elements of the skirt. These are folded tucks, and actually they are put in by machine. We have one, two, three tucks, and many times the number three in clothing that was for uh, a religious ceremony stood for Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then we have some insertion. Then another set of three tucks. Now this is the most unusual. Let me hold it how you, here so you can see it. Do you see how the strips with the three tucks the French lace, the three tucks, the French lace. Do you see how they are sewn in diagonally? I think that is beautiful. This is really my only dress that has this exact feature. All right, we have three more tucks. Let me hold it again. And then another piece of these wonderful tucks and insertion that has been sewn in on the diagonal. Then more tucks, and this bottom of this dress is so pretty. It has two beautiful wide pieces of lace. Oh, would I love to have some of this lace today. Hard to find this insertion, I mean edging this wide. And I want to show you that there's just a, a strip underneath the second piece because it needed to lengthen it. But isn't that pretty? The way there are, are actually two ruffles on the bottom of this dress, and it's very unusual too. And the back is absolutely just as pretty as the front. I'll turn it around so you can see it's exactly like the front. Today I have two incredible stories to read you. One story is about a group of ladies in Yongsan, Korea. Dear Martha, and by the way, this was sent to me by Tasman Wood Creighton. I would like to recognize the ladies from the quilters group in Yonsan, Korea. These military spouses use their time and talents to support two very important groups, wounded soldiers and the stock's nest. These women selflessly give of their time and talents to create patriotic themed quilts that they package with a matching pillowcase and then forward to our wounded warriors and land stole Germany and the hospital. The second selfless act they perform is creating beautiful baby quilts to welcome the new little members of our military community. They provide an average of 15 quilts per month for births here in the Yonsan military community of Korea. Thank you so much, ladies. And another incredible group, our church, the Santa Clarita United Methodist Church in Southern California has a group called the Blanket Brigade. We make blankets, knitted, crocheted, sewn, and fleece for children going into foster care, often in the middle of the night with no personal items except for what is on their backs. We feel they need something to cuddle and to comfort them. We have provided approximately 1,000 blankets in about three years. I plan to embroider some fleece blankets on my new machine. And this was from Carolyn from the Santa Clarita United Methodist Church in California. Ladies, thank you so much for the work you're doing. And I thank you for the volunteer work you're doing with your sewing machines. Thank you so much for joining me today. Won't you come back next time?